be about groans from some conservatives after your endorsements from the New York Times and the Boston Globe. You said, quote, what conservatives have to know is they have to say, look, isn't it nice to have a conservative like me liked? And maybe they ought to think about it. Because if I get elected president, the Republican Party and the definition of conservatism is going to change. How would you change conservatism? Well, well first of all, look, uh, as the New York Times said, he's certainly not a moderate, but he can bring people together to solve problems. And the, the fact of the matter is I've cut taxes more than anybody in the country uh, this year. I have, uh, I have balanced budgets, the federal budget, the state of Ohio budget. We're running a $2 billion surplus. We're up 400,000 jobs. And in Washington, we were able to have significant job growth uh, when, whenever we balanced the budget of which I was the architect. But here's the beauty of it. It's not just balancing a budget. It's about jobs. You know, when I was a kid growing up in a neighborhood where if dad went home at night and said, I lost my job today, it just killed the family. It just, it, ter it just was a devastating effect. So we have to have economic growth. But once we have economic growth, I believe we have to reach out to people who live in the shadows. I believe we need to help the mentally ill, the drug addicted, the working poor. We need to help the developmentally disabled to rise. And we need to help our friends in the minority community develop entrepreneurship. In other words, in America, conservatism should mean not only that some rise with conservative principles, but everybody has a chance to re rise regardless of who they are so they can live their God-given purpose. That's what conservatism should be. Governor Casey, thank you. Mr. Trump, you've heard the argument from many of the candidates on this stage that you're not a true conservative. Tell the voters watching tonight why you are. Well, I think I am. And to me, I view the word conservative as a derivative of, of, of the word conserve. Uh, we want to conserve our money. We want to conserve our wealth. We want to conserve. We want to be smart. We want to be smart where we go, where we spend, how we spend. We want to conserve our country. We want to save our country. And we have people that have no idea how to do that, and they're not doing it. And it's a very important word, and it's something I believe in very, very strongly. Mr. Trump, thank you. Senator Rubio, you have said yourself that you don't think Donald Trump is running as a conservative. Did he convince you? Well, I think conservatism is about three things, and Donald touched on one of them, but it's about three things. The first is conservatism is about limited government especially at the federal level. The federal government is a limited government, limited by the Constitution, which delineates its powers. If it's not in the Constitution, it does not belong to the federal government. It belongs to states, local communities, and the private sector. It's about free enterprise, which is an economic model that allows everyone to rise without pulling anyone down. The reason why free enterprise is the greatest economic model in the history of the world is because it's the only economic model where you can make poor people richer without making rich people poor. And it's about a strong national defense. It's about believing, unlike Barack Obama, that the world is a safer and a better place when America is the strongest military and the strongest nation on this planet. That's conservatism. Senator Rubio, thank you. I want to turn this discussion to the economy now. And Mr. Trump, Governor Christie has said, I tell everybody who goes to a Donald Trump event, if you get to ask a question, just ask him how. Christie said, I don't care which of the things he talks about, just ask him how. You have said that you'd be the greatest jobs president God ever created. Tell Americans watching tonight how many jobs you would create in the first term and how? Well, before I go there, I will tell you, I will bring jobs back from China. I will bring jobs back from Japan. I will bring jobs back from Mexico, where New Hampshire, by the way, has been virtually wiped out. They've lost so many businesses going to Mexico because of horrible trade deals. And now we're about to sign another trade deal, TPP, which is going to be a disaster for this country because they don't talk about monetary manipulation. It is going to be a disaster. I'm going to bring jobs back, and I'll start bringing them back very fast fast. Under my tax plan, right now we're the highest taxed country in the world. Under my plan, we cut not only taxes for the middle class, but we cut taxes for corporations. We will bring back trillions of dollars. That's offshore. Right now they have two and a half trillion dollars. And in my opinion, it's much more than that. That's what the government says. All of that money is going to come back. And we're not going to lose Pfizer, which is now leaving, and other great companies, which is now leaving. And they're all leaving. We have many, many companies that are leaving this country. We're not going to lose them anymore because we're going to have a tax structure that is going to keep them in our country. Mr. Trump, thank you. There are a lot of governors on this stage tonight, and Governor Christie, Governor Kasich has said of you, quote, in Ohio, we have balanced a budget. They don't have one over in New Jersey. Our credit has been strengthened. Their credit has been downgraded. We've got more jobs. 
How important are those metrics in choosing the next president? And is his job on credit, is his record on jobs, I should say, actually stronger than yours? Well, he deserves credit for his record on jobs, and he's done a very good job as governor of Ohio. Never said that John hasn't. He's done a very good job. Um, but, but unfortunately, John's been so busy doing other stuff, he's using old statistics. That's okay. New Jersey had its best year of job growth in the last 15 years under five different governors this year in New Jersey. New Jersey has cut spending over $2.3 billion, and we have 10,000 fewer employees than we had when I walked in the door. John has a bigger government now and more employees than he had when he walked in the door. But all that doesn't matter. What really matters is this that executive experience really matters. You heard this on the stage tonight. We've heard it said on the stage that President Obama knows exactly what he's doing. I'd like to ask all the veterans listening out there tonight who are waiting in line for health care, who are literally dying because the Veterans Administration doesn't work, do you think Barack Obama knows what he's doing? I don't. And I'll tell you something, anybody who evaluates him as knowing what he's doing and managing the government doesn't know how to manage a government themselves. And one last thing, David, which I think is really important. I listened to Senator Rubio's answer on his bill. He said his bill couldn't pass on the Gang of Eight. He acted as if he was somehow disembodied from the bill. It was his bill. He said this idea doesn't work. It was his idea. See, when you're a governor, you have to take responsibility for these things. You can't just act as if it happened out of nowhere. We have to take responsibility as executives. I take responsibility for my record in New Jersey. We've rebuilt the economy, and we rebuilt after the second worst natural disaster in American history. I'm proud of my record. And by the way, I like Kasich's record, too. He's David. a good governor. David. governor David. Thank you, Governor, governor Kasich. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm not here. I, I, I like Chris. You I did mean, say your record much. was better than but, his. But, let, but let, me, let me just tell you. First of all, we have the lowest number of state employees in 30 years. Uh, secondly, uh, we have grown government at the rate of inflation. And I went from an $8 billion hole to a $2 billion surplus. And we've grown jobs by 400,000. That's one of the fastest growing states in the country. Our pensions are secure and our credit is rock solid. Now, I've learned that what makes, what makes things work, what gets the economy going, not just in Ohio, but in Washington. And it's three things, common sense regulations, which we have, lower taxes, which we have, the lowest taxes, tax cuts in the country, and thirdly, a fiscal plan to balance the budget. When you go from $8 billion in the hole to $2 billion in the black, when you cut taxes by $5 billion and you grow over 400,000 jobs, that is a record that I can take to Washington using the same formula that I used in Washington when I was part of the effort to balance the budget, to give us a surplus, and to create jobs. Governor That's what Kasich, I did, and I'll you. do it again Governor in the first Kasich, 100 days. I do want to turn from, from jobs to taxes. Well, that was mentioned by Governor. If you'd like to respond to the Governor, yeah. you can. I'm going to come to you next with the question anyway. You okay, can respond good. in that question. Uh, here's the, going going from here. jobs to taxes, and here, here's well, the Well, no, sorry, number. let me respond to that question. To the Gang of Eight bill first. Well, here's the response. If, I think... Anyone who believes that Barack Obama isn't doing what he's doing on purpose doesn't understand what we're dealing with here. Okay, this is a president. This is a president who is trying to change this country. When he talked about change, he wasn't talking about dealing with our problems. Obamacare was not an accident. The undermining of the Second Amendment is not an accident. The gutting of our military is not an accident. The undermining of America on the global stage is not an accident. Barack Obama is indeed trying to redefine this country. We better understand what we're dealing with here, because that's what Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders want to double down on if they are elected. The governor wasn't talking about the president. He was talking about no, the gang of eight, Barack Obama. But let me ask you about taxes, uh, yes. Senator Rubio. A recent poll, 68% of Americans favor raising taxes on people making more than a million a year. Are they wrong? I don't know of any problem in America that's going to be fixed with a tax increase. We have an economy today, an economy today that is not creating jobs that pay enough. And one of the reasons why is because we have one of the most expensive business tax rates on the planet. Our combined business tax rate puts us among the highest in the industrialized world. And then on top of that, we are the only one that has a worldwide system of taxation, where an American company who makes money abroad has to pay taxes where they made the money, and then taxes a second time when they bring it back. The combination of these two things has stranded over $2 trillion, the equivalent of the size of the Russian economy, $2 trillion of American corporate money stranded overseas, combined with all of these inversions of companies leaving us. The solution to the problems we have today are not a tax increase. It is to lower our taxes on both people and on companies so that we can make America globally competitive again. Senator Rubio, thank you. I want to bring in Governor Bush.
And, and Governor, I just want to repeat that number for you. 68% of Americans favor raising taxes on people making more than a million. What would you say to the people who believe that tonight? I'd like to see more millionaires. I think we need to grow more millionaires. We need to create a prosperity society where people can rise up. This notion that somehow we're undertaxed as a nation is just just foolhardy when we have entitlements growing far faster than our ability to pay for it. A conservative, because that's the point of this, believes in limited government, believes in entrepreneurial capitalism and a strong national defense. But it also has to be, we need to reform things. In my town hall meetings, I went to a place where a woman described her neighbor who has a better economic deal by not working than her struggling to make ends meet. We be, need to be on the side of working people. And pro, you know, the problem with the left is another tax, another regulation, another mandate makes it harder for them to rise up. Everything that we should do should be focused on high sustained economic growth where the middle class gets a raise for the first time and where people are rewarded for work rather than non-work. And I know how to do this. And if people are interested in the specifics of this, they ought to go to jeb2016.com. Knew David. that was coming, Kevin. Hey, David. Thank you. David. David. Hey, David. I, I actually have experience with raising taxes on millionaires in my state. It was done. It was done by my predecessor. And I want everybody in the public who isn't at 68 percent, I want to tell you the truth. You're wrong. And here's why you're wrong. After New Jersey raised taxes on millionaires, we lost in the next four years $70 billion in wealth left our state. It left our state to go where it would be treated more kindly. If, if the United States raised taxes any further, that money will leave the United States as well. We won't have better jobs. Let New Jersey be the canary in the coal mine. It is a failed idea and a failed policy. It's class warfare. It happened in my state. I've stopped it from happening again. But we cannot do it. The 68% of the people are wrong about that. It will hurt the American economy. We tried it in New Jersey. Come take a look. It did not work. Governor Christie, thank you. Martha? Senator Cruz, you advocate what you call carpet bombing or saturation bombing to defeat ISIS, citing the more than 1,100 air attacks a day the U.S. carried out during the first Gulf War in 1991. Explain how a strategy to defeat a standing army would work against an unconventional terrorist group that is now hiding amongst the population. Well, sure, it starts with a commander-in-chief that sets the objective. And the objective has to be utterly and completely destroying ISIS. Obama hasn't started with that objective, and everything else flows from there. Once you set that objective, we have the tools to carry that out. The first tool is overwhelming air power. It is one of the blessings of the United States of America having the greatest military in the face of the earth, is we have the ability to use that air power. As you noted, the first Persian Gulf War, it was 1,100 air attacks a day. Obama is launching between 15 and 30. Now, when I say saturation carpet bombing, that's not indiscriminate. That is targeted at oil facilities. It's targeted at the oil tankers. It's targeted at command and control locations. It's targeted at infrastructure. It's targeted at communications. It's targeted at bombing all of the roads and bridges going in and out of Raqqa. It's using overwhelming air power. You know, a couple of weeks ago, it was reported that a facility is opened called Jihadist University. Now the question I wonder, why is that building still standing? It should be rubble. And if you had a president, although I will say this, I would be willing to wait until freshman orientation before launching those bombs. Senator Cruz, would you like to expand or...